government on its part is trying to allay the fears of the farmers by holding press conference after press conference saying that uh, stop protesting, listen in to the amendments. But the farmers have decided that enough is enough and they're going to continue to stick to their demand. In fact, agitate even more, up the ante as they say. One actor and entrepreneur who's supporting the farmers in their cause is Gul Panag. We spoke to her just a short while ago. Gul, many thanks for joining us. My first question, why did you feel the need to support the farmers, Gul? The reason I uh, came out here to support the farmers was because I was deeply troubled by this false narrative that was being built uh, to discredit these protests, to subvert these protests and to divert from the real issue of, uh, of what the farmers were, were fighting for. It deeply disturbed me that just because a, a significant number of people protesting here are from Punjab that they could be labelled Khalistani. For me that's, I mean there's nothing more hurtful than that. Uh, and that to be honest, to, to see uh, just because people are protesting against a government to just start this narrative that this could be uh, a Khalistan movement was, was very, very uh, hurtful, painful and in fact uh, I just felt extremely be betrayed as a, as, a, as a citizen of this country. Um, and I wanted to come and see for myself that was there even an iota of, uh, of truth in this narrative that was being tried to be spun and uh, there wasn't firstly there were lots of people from different parts of the country. The first lot of farmers I met, in fact, I put a Twitter out, uh, I put a video out on Twitter as well, were from Haryana. I've met with farmers from Madhya Pradesh, farmers from um, UP, Rajasthan, uh, and, and a lot more beyond Punjab. So that was the first thing that I, I, I stood corrected on because I too had actually bought this, uh, this narrative that, that was trying to be pushed out. Being from Punjab, you know, obviously I was aware of the matter and I knew the protests had been on since September, in fact. But um, it was just the sense of betrayal that brought me here. You know, this point, Gul, that you... you that a bona fide movement was being given this very, very dangerous label. Label, okay. It's interesting that you've used uh, the word label a lot in your first reply. So, do you think that this... These labeling techniques or this label technique is what has created what many are calling now a trust deficit between the government and the farmers. I think definitely there is a there is a trust deficit between the farming community and the government now. And and that's for two reasons. One, because there has been a concerted and concentrated effort to subvert, to undermine and to discredit this movement, a bona fide movement. Uh, because the right to protest is is is, the, is at the heart of democracy. So I think the labels that have been given to this particular movement uh, have done a lot of harm in, in in the trust that that you know may have existed. And secondly, perhaps, uh, and I can only sort of speculate. And secondly, perhaps the manner in which first these laws were brought in as 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 ordinances in the month of June, um, in in a time when uh, we were in lockdown and then they were sort of passed through parliament, some would say rushed through parliament, uh, passed by a voice vote. It sort of creates a, a lot of doubts in the farming community about the real intentions of the government. I mean, there is such an overwhelming majority that this government has in Lok Sabha, in Rajya Sabha. Really, was there a need to rush through this act like this and put it put it, you know, put it forward um, as an ordinance in the middle of a, of a of a lockdown so that is where really the, the doubts about the the intention come forward and uh, I mean they're hard to refute and most importantly uh, when the farming community has operated a particular way for over 50 years and I'm not going to say that way is good I'm not going to say that way is bad but essentially everybody wants to make a better life and everybody is pro-reform but you have to build consensus when you're going to come in with such sweeping laws that are going to impact the livelihoods of more than 60 percent of this population and you're not going to try and build consensus there is going to be a lot of betrayal and then there is going to be an increasing trust deficit and today the talks that are happening which uh, which have been happening every day for the last few days uh, are ad ideally talks that should have happened before this bill was, uh, was tabled and that's the sad part that the very conversations that they try to avoid the very conversation that they perhaps didn't want to have and um, I mean I, the word that comes to my mind is stealth the stealth with which 
an attempt was made to push this through uh, was perhaps what created this trust deficit. Well said, well said. Uh, and you think that the farmers would not have been this rigid if the amendments or voices at least of these farmers would have been heard in the first place? A lot of people countered me on social media saying, how are you a farmer? My grandfather served in the army, then uh, came back and farmed. My father served in the army for 40 years, now farms. His brother served in the army for 35 odd years, came back and farmed. So we are essentially farmers. There's no two ways about that. My father lives on a farm at, at our village, Mahadiya in Fatehgarh Sahib. Uh, now, the thing is, I'll tell you one thing about the way farmers think. You, 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 you appeal to them, you talk to them nicely. They'll give you a big chunk of good jaggery. But you try and push things down their throat, they will fight over one stem of sugarcane. And that's what, unfortunately, this has come down to. I mean, had this been done in a manner which was democratic, which was engaging, which brought different uh, farmer unions together and tried to build consensus, the harder part of reform is building consensus for reform. Just pushing reform through is, is never the answer, in, in, in my humble opinion. And, uh, you know, you... Uh, the, uh, a farmer everywhere will fight tooth and nail for that one stem of sugarcane. But you ask him nicely, he'll give you this giant piece of jaggery which will have taken him so much more effort to make. Yeah, no, really well said. I, I, I agree with what you're saying. But Gul, what do you have to say about uh, some members of your own fraternity saying things like these people gathered there are gathering there for a hundred rupees. I mean, Diljit Dosanjh uh, did try to fight this off. but. Uh, What's your opinion? It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart in, into a million pieces. It breaks my heart that we are citizens of this country and a concerted effort is being made by people who clearly speak on behalf of the dispensation to label uh, a bona fide movement into, into something that is a paid protest or in a movement that is anti-national or a movement that has quote-unquote Khalistani elements hijacking it. I mean, it just breaks my heart. I cannot believe that in this day and age, I have to fight to prove my patriotism. It breaks my heart. I have nothing more to say on that. Sure, sure. We'll leave it at that also because this is not, uh, it's inconsequential, this sort of a discussion. But surely uh, there should not be a situation, Gul, where farmers have to sit in a protest in this cold, biting cold for a very long time. Many of them have lost their lives. But the government too is adamant. What according to you is actually the way forward? The government says agree with the amendments. What according to you is the way forward? Uh, it's, my, it's my humble appeal to uh, the Prime Minister that we must find a speedy solution and make sure these farmers go back to their homes, go back to the warmth of their homes, go back to their children, go back to their fields and don't remain here in this brutal weather which is going to get brutal day by day uh, and you're right uh, it appears to be an impasse and one doesn't know if there's a solution in sight but we have to have confidence building measures I mean that's just something that's how uh, that's how government work and that's how that is the government's job that's why they are elected they need to find a solution it's not your job to offer them a solution it's certainly not my job sure. to offer them a solution uh, it's what they are elected for they need to build uh, confidence now and they need to look like they are uh, willing to listen to these people and uh, sort of narrow the trust deficit that exists. Okay, Gul, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you a difficult question. Let's see if you can answer this one or not. So uh, the thing is that students have protested against the government, members of the minority community have protested against the government, doctors have protested, now even farmers are protesting. And yet, every time the government posts an electoral win, turns around and says, see, in elections we have won, which means all of this was a bogey. People were with us. Electorally, we are strong. And that's the proof that we are right. How do you respond? There's no two, there's no two ways about that. The electoral ability, the election fighting machine of the BJP is unparalleled in Indian history. But uh, ultimately, is, is that what it's all about is it always about just forming governments i mean punjab is 13 seats for them um i mean is it is it is is what you're doing in this process the attempts that are being made constantly to polarize are they really worth it in the long run is the question that they're going to have to ask themselves is it all just about winning elections 
is it always just about polarization? The polarization uh, has been something that's been um, an active uh, instrument of election fighting of the BJP and they've been very successful in it. But I'm not sure that's the way forward as far as the farm crisis is concerned because that would be, that would be perhaps uh, a mistake that we don't want to make. You sure. cannot polarize the farmer. It would be, it would be devastating. No, it would be devastating, but you know, here's my question. A lot of experts say that farming in India is, should not be seen as an occupation or a profession. It's actually a way of life. Do you think a government uh, which boasts of electoral wins would not understand that they are upsetting so many farmers and this will not make electoral sense? Do you think the government is naive? I think, I think everybody will agree here that agrarian reform is needed, uh, labor reform is needed. But are you going to push these reforms through the manner in which you have pushed labor reform and agrarian reform through? Is that the way you want to do it, by stealth, by not building consensus, by not taking all stake stakeholders on board, by not addressing and assuaging all the fears and concerns of people whose livelihoods depend on it? Now that's a question the government must ask itself and that's an answer only the government can give. Gulpanag, pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for speaking to NDTV.